So we just intersected two graphs above and got this weird shape. It was sort of a two pizza crust looking shapes. The official name of this donut looking graph is called an annulus right here. So if you want to use proper math terms, that's an annulus. I don't know what that second shape is called. That's not really a shape, or not really has a name. Sideways bow tie, sounds good. The infinite bow tie. So we're gonna go and do some conversions back and forth. I think we wrote down all four equations that we're going to need. So we're gonna actually use all four of these for conversions, so I'll rewrite them. Every time you write something down, usually remember it a little bit better. So we're gonna write them down one more time. So these are our conversion equations. So we'll start Pythagorean x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And then r, so we'll keep the rectangle on the left side, x equals r cos theta, y equals r sine theta, and then last up, y over x equals tan theta. So we're gonna use these to convert. We did some conversions before, so I'm choosing problems that look a little bit different. Well, technically before we did conversions, but we eliminated the t variable. So these will feel similar, but there's no t variable. So they're actually slightly different conversions. <coughs> So here we're going from polar to Cartesian. Our first example, convert to polar. X squared plus Y minus three squared equals nine. So do you remember what equation this is before we even convert it? It's a circle. What we could do is write it as x minus zero squared plus y minus three squared equals three squared. So our center is the shift x has. The center x coordinate is the shift that x has, which is zero. The center y coordinates, the vertical shift, the shift that y has. Will the center be at three or negative three for the y coordinate? be a positive three. Another way to tell, just think about what would give you zero for that whole term right there. What would zero that out? And the answer is three. And then of course, what would zero x out? That's easy, zero. So that's another way to think about shifts. All right, convert to polar. How, uh, the instructions say convert to polar, implying that we have rectangular or Cartesian. How else do you tell we have a rectangular or Cartesian equation? It's got X's and Y's, so X and Y's you're dealing in rectangular. All right, convert. All you have to do is use the formulas right above. We got a slight problem. There is no R cos theta. Oh no, we don't have a problem. We're just gonna swap right in. X gets taken out for R cos theta and our Y gets taken out for R sine theta. So that's all we need to do here. R cos theta squared plus R, oops, R sine theta minus three squared equals nine. We can square this, foil this out, and then I believe that will be a positive nine, would cancel the other nine. So we could simplify this a little bit but Why won't it just take no, no. actually let's simplify this a little bit that'll be fun all right make this as simple as you can first step is foil So that's your first step there, expanding out that r sine theta minus three.
have any algebra questions on simplifying? Oh yeah, you would definitely have an R squared. R squared, R squared. So it would probably make sense to divide by R. So we would be left with that right there. All right, so I canceled extra fast and made a mistake. So I did that so that you won't cancel too quickly and make a mistake. So in my mind, of course, cos squared plus sine squared is one, but what I skipped is factoring out the r squared. So I should have gone with the uh, step r squared, cos squared plus sine squared, like that, and then it would have been clear that that cancels out to one or left with r squared. So be a little bit careful you don't want to go too fast unless you're, you have 20 people watching all of your moves. And then somebody will probably catch it. But when you're by yourself, especially on a quiz, your homework you can go super fast and then go back and go slow if you get the answer wrong. But I recommend don't do that on a midterm or a quiz. Unless you want to go super fast and then look at it a second time slowly. That's another option. So we'll go the other direction this time. Oh, we could graph, but I think at this point, graphing a circle with the center and a radius is pretty trivial. So I'm going to skip the graphing step on this right here. So we'll convert to Cartesian. R equals 4 cos theta. That looks really similar to what we had before. But we're going the opposite direction. So you can use any of those four formulas we had above. So you should have them on your paper. So one thing you can do, this is almost the identical problem. Just do the similar steps in reverse order if you're stuck. So think about what we did and go walk backwards. The opposite of completing this or of squaring a term is completing the square. So if you forgot that, that can make it on your formula page. But I use complete the square, took half a negative four, negative two, and just use a complete the square formula. 
We were technically done on the second step right here where I put the check mark, we turned it into rectangular. But if I asked you to graph it, you'd probably want to go to that last version down there so you can graph it very easily. Instead of making a big table of values, plotting points, only to realize that you have a circle. And where the center and the radius was. So we're going to look at symmetry now. And of course, this is symmetry in polar coordinates. So you should find this to be a review of pre-calculus 2 class, also known as trigonometry class. Of course, we didn't take derivatives, which we're taking now, but we did parametrics and polar coordinates then, and a lot of this is review from pre-calculus. So we'll start with x-axis. I'm going to write polar coordinates here, so we're going to use an r and a theta. So we have our radius and our theta. So the symmetric point goes across the x axis, so it's going to be the same point, except it'll be below the x axis. <coughs> so what happens to the angle to get down here to quadrant four? So we got to spin the wrong way, so it's negative theta. Does the R change? Yeah. R is going to stay the same. So it's a little bit weird. The second coordinate gets reversed or goes negative. And that gives us x-axis symmetry. So we're going to replace. This is for our test over here. Replace theta by negative theta. There is another name for this point. What if I use negative r for the radius? Now I have to think a little bit harder. So if I, if I go negative r, that's negative r oh. using the theta angle. So it's a little bit tricky. Or I could write the angle I want right there. So one way to think about it, that would be negative theta. But where am I starting with that green angle? Pi. I'm starting at pi, and I'm going to come back theta, or pi minus theta. That's going to be the angle right there. So the leftover angle here is pi minus theta. Let's zoom in and make that legible. So that'll be pi minus theta. So we could have a second test replace both r and theta at the same time by negative r and pi minus theta. So definitely a lot uh, more algebra you probably have to do for that second test. So if we look for y-axis symmetry, the graph is Kind of similar, but this time we're going across the y-axis. So our original point is going to still be r theta. So if we keep the same r, what theta do we need over here? I minus theta. So we kind of did it last example. So you're going to go over pi and then come back theta. So we're going to have pi minus theta as our angle here.
Wouldn't the R be negative? Because in the last one you said negative, it's negative R. I did say in the last one negative R. So let's zoom in on the last one. If I use regular R, what I would have had was that point right there. Mm -hmm. But we used negative R because I wanted the quadrant four point. Oh, I see. So in this one, we're actually using regular R because I want that second quadrant point right there. Okay. It's weird, the angle's the same, but we want to go the exact opposite direction. So we're gonna have a second name for this point. Let's use negative for the R value. And this will also be similar to the last symmetry test. What angle would I use with negative R? So what I'm gonna do is draw the angle I need over here. So that would be the angle going the wrong way. I don't think I can draw a straight line very well off of this one. Must be exact. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's so cool. That is really neat. I know one of you really appreciates it. <laughs> Hides the ruler. <laughs> All right, how, what is the name of this angle that I just drew right there? Give you a hint. It's pretty much just like what we did for the last one. 2 pi minus theta? I could do 2 pi minus theta. There's an easier name for it. Negative theta. Negative theta. We'll just go the easy way. Well, you could do 15, 16 pi minus theta if you want, but we'll just go minus theta. So there's our minus theta. All right, we did have to reverse the radius though, so that's why we're doing negative r minus theta. So in this test, we're doing both coordinates get changed. So we're doing a replace where you see r and theta with negative r and negative theta. So the second test, the negative r and negative theta, one, that happens with both of them? Wouldn't that either do both of them? So there's two tests for each of these symmetries. But they, they both have negative or negative theta as one of their tests. This, so this first one here does not change R. They're similar. They're definitely similar. But they're not the same. They're different combinations of things. All right, one last symmetry. What is the last symmetry? Origin. So origin symmetry is going to be a little different. So origin, we're going to go the opposite side of the origin. So we're going to go right straight through the origin and out the other side. My angle is too close to 45 degrees. I don't want an angle that's that close to 45 degrees or pi over 4. So I'm going to make a smaller angle intentionally. So I'm going to draw the other point that's on the other side of the origin right there. So let's worry about the angle first. What angle do I need if I use regular R? So we want to go basically theta past pi, so pi plus theta. I'm going to write it the way I wrote the other ones, put the theta first, I'm going to write it as theta, I oh know we did write pi minus theta, yeah, so we'll go pi plus theta. Trying to keep everything as consistent as possible. What if I use negative r, what angle do I need? Is it too easy? 
Just theta. It's a little weird, but negative r just goes where we need to go. So our test, we replace. Let's write the simple test first. Well, they're both kind of simple. So I'll do replace r with negative r. And the other test, replace, oops, don't replace pi. Replace theta with pi plus theta. And that is the end of class today. We are almost done with 11.4, so you should be able to do a lot of your homeworks on 11.4.